Welcome. It's the 7th of July, 2023. This is Documentation Office Hours for the Jenkins Project. Today's topics, Google Summer of Code, uh, open pull requests, and a forewarning that I'm not going to be, this meeting won't happen next week or the following week. Any other topics you want to put on the list, Ashutosh? Okay, so let's put this here. Great, all right. So on the Google Summer of Code topic, congratulations, you did a great job on the presentation, Ashutosh, well done. Slides for the, the presentation are available here. And the recording from the webinar is available here. So thanks very, very much. Uh, it was a, a very enjoyable session. A lot of fun. Any Thanks. any inputs or any comments you want to make on that experience? Uh, it was my first time uh, presenting uh, for presenting uh, in this style, so it was a nice experience. I was nervous at first, but I did practice uh, for two day uh, for last two days. I was practicing and fixing errors on the slides, so it was a nice experience. Great. All right, and if I remember right, you were were you the second presenter, the third yeah, presenter? I was, I was the last one, fourth one. Last. Okay, so we should embed a link to your destination in the slides because that way we've got it here. Okay, so your slides are here, Doc. Okay, good. So what we'll do is we'll copy a video URL to that. Well done, very good. All right, so let's, shall we spend some time focused then on, on that Docker quick start work that you were doing? Uh, I had thought you were out. So Bruno had done two pull requests that he mentioned and I had done some experimenting. You wanna, do you wanna, do you have some, any questions about my experiments or? Any things that you would like to do specifically? Uh, so uh, for the uh, past uh, two, three days, I was uh, mostly focused on uh, the midterm. So I didn't uh, read read all the issues in uh, detail that uh, Bruno opened, uh, but I did read, uh, read your PR right now. So uh, for the uh, updating plugins, uh, we were uh, thinking of uh, updating them eventually with update.cli or something like that. So uh, the PR you shared uh, does this script uh, does all that uh, replaces that uh, update dot CLI. Uh, so know what that script that script is how I manage them personally. So update CLI would also be fine. Uh, update CLI for me is more complicated because yeah, when I works. run that script. When the script does the all the work of update CLI for me without without having to try to teach update CLI how to understand Jenkins versions. So I would I would guide you probably for plugin updates at least away from update CLI because update CLI never will never understand. Um, let's see how do I describe it. The Jenkins plugin installation manager understands Jenkins versions and dependencies, whereas update CLI does not. Uh, so that's one I can discuss it with Bruno separately to be sure he understands why I think update CLI is probably not a not a good choice in this case. Bruno, Bruno also mentioned that uh, implementing update CLI will be a hassle. Good. So, yes. Yeah, so so the the technique I've used is is simpler than update CLI in the sense that all it does is let's see, let's go look at that pull request, shall we? Because the pull request gives us gives us an indication of it. 
So update the plugin list inside the description of the plugin list is that that little shell script I use to update and run. This thing does, it downloads the plugin installation manager, creates the directory and then runs it using the plugin list. Now that's that's probably not the right thing for you to do. But for me, it was it's a relatively easy thing to do. So let's go look now. Let's see, where was it? So that, let me embed a link to that pull request. So what I'd suggest is you could take that pull request as is and just merge it because it won't do any harm to you the to the environment and then later you can decide what you want to do with in terms of plugin updates all this is doing is updating the versions of the plugin oh whoops now why okay sorry i made a mistake i thought i was current and obviously i've done damage to a file so this this pull request needs to be corrected let's make a note on that uh request change okay needs to have unexpected changes removed sorry about that ashutosh and that was daily update uh, file yeah well and that shouldn't be changed in this pull request right this pull request was intended to only do um, a plugins update i'm obviously i made a mistake when i was creating the the commit do you mind if I take a minute and fix that now? Well, since I made that mistake, I don't know. Okay, so let's check out that pull request. Hi, Meg. Hello. Sorry, Hello. I'm late. It oh no! Thanks for joining. It was quarter of, and I just just chatting in Slack on with somebody else over there, and I looked at the clock, and I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> okay, so get stash save. Oh, oh, sorry, I have to make some other fixes while I'm here, Ashutosh. It'll be just a moment. Fine. Uh, also, I, uh, I don't, uh, I haven't used uh, GitHub CLI that much, uh, so I'm also learning. Okay. So Josh, I always like it when Mark makes a mistake. It makes me feel so much better. Right, right. About That's myself. what we need is we need to see more mistakes. Well, okay. no, I see so many of my own. It's just refreshing when I see that, you know, what can happen to you too. So, okay. So here we go. So let's see. We were on this one and oh, and it's not called master. It's called main, isn't it? Okay. Interesting. So why? Why did that? Huh? huh? Okay, now I don't understand it, Ashutosh. All right, so I look at this. I want to merge into main from update plugins, but it shows two files changed, but in my diff, I only see one. Huh. <laughs> I don't get to do that. Oh, let's fix a few other things while we're here.
Okay, origin is correct. Update plugins is using origin. Huh. Oh, oh. I made a mistake. Okay, now we should see my mistake has been repaired. Okay, and my mistake is repaired. Now, Ashutosh, one of the things when you merge this, you would do me a favor if instead if if you're willing to merge it you would do me a favor if you would squash merge it so on your user interface what you'll see in this section here is an option to do let's see let's open up an example and show you one let's look at jenkins.io uh, i i can share my screen if you want i already have the same oh great so if you've got it up and running let's turn off screen sharing for me and we'll let you share your screen and we can work through it. Perfect. Okay, so scroll upwards. Is there a refresh? Okay, uh, interest. Okay, so refresh your page because it should show only one file change, not two. It does, good, okay. One file change. And now if we look at this file, It should just be the plugins text file, which it is. Good. Okay, very good. So now go back to the conversation. And there at the bottom, in on the green merge pull request button, there's a drop down list. Yeah, click that and click squash and merge, because what that does is that hides my embarrassment. <laughs> and it keeps your, your commit history clean. Okay. So what's this? Yeah, so what it does is it constructs a commit message that is the combination of all the commits that were in it, but it creates only one commit. Okay, okay, I got it. So now if you just hit confirm, squash, and merge. Very good. All right, now what I can do is I'll be able to switch to mine and pull in your change. Can I stop the sharing? Uh, yes, if you'd like to stop the sharing, you can. Okay, and let's, I can start sharing mine so that we can see what's happening there. So share. All right, so what you'll see here is, let's make the text big enough to read. I just did a git pull and it brought in your change or it brought in the change that was just merged by you from me. So now when we look at git log, we see here is my log message. And now I'm going to clean up a little bit of my debris. Great. Now I had started the demonstra I had started running uh, the demonstration that you've got, and I actually was just using Bruno's Node.js sample. If you'd like, we could test drive the the one that we just made the change to instead. What do you? Is there something yeah. particular you'd like to do next? Uh, the one we just made changes to uh, that that is the default one we can test that one okay just a minute i need to stop that one and docker compose minus f and the one we're going to stop is this one no no i was using i was using bruno's okay i'll have to do it the hard way 
because I've changed branches and so I can no longer see Bruno's file. Okay, Docker PS. So if I say dot slash Jenkins underscore in it, and it's here, uh, is it new? Yes, new. Okay. All right, so now what this should do, oh, oh, it says I've already got a container in use. Yes, so I have to prune that container. Okay, now let's try that again. Interesting. Okay, so it did not. Okay, do you use the uh, image that it built previously? So it didn't detect my change to plugins.txt. Interesting. Okay, now I've got to think about why it didn't detect that. So when I run it, when we look at this, we'll see, okay, I'm going to bring it up and we'll look at it on, on a shared screen. So here's that computer and I'm going to open the Jenkins controller on it. Here it is. So now I log in as the user admin with the password admin. And now we've got this sim simple demo job. And when I run it, we will see that it will run. Oh, whoops, it ran on the built-in. Oh, oh, so the one of the gaps here is the built-in node has not been configured with zero executors. Uh, I'm not testing it ran with the agent, but. Uh. Oh, oh, wait a sec. Okay, this is a pipeline job, is that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So I I just misread it. Let's let's fix my uh, we it is correctly configured to not have to not have any executors on the controller and let's prove that just a moment. Yeah, so it does have zero my mistake. What I saw there was the pipeline doing its checkout of the of the Jenkins file and that has to happen on the controller, but that's not actually execution of the job. So you're correct. This is this did run. If we look at where it runs, we'll see in the log file it will say running on Docker SSH Jenkins agent. Good. So we've got an agent. Now, one of the complexities hiding here is that there is there is a warning dialog that appears. You see this, it appears your reverse proxy setup is broken. Yeah. And uh, we do have open issue with, uh, right now with this warning. Good. So, so when I fought with that issue myself on mine, I had to set this Jenkins URL. And the challenge for me was I can't yeah. set that Jenkins URL from inside the Docker container because inside the container i don't know the the host name of the computer that's hosting the container so i'm not it's not obvious to me how to solve that now from jenkins in it.sh i think you could solve it because there you know the host name but the problem is we want to eventually get away from jenkins.sh i think and shift towards just using docker compose directly so uh, I still don't know quite how to solve it, but you say you've got an issue already tracking it. Yes. Great. Okay. And it looks like the job is configured to run periodically. Is that right? Yes. At Good. Eight times. Yes. So it runs every two minutes. Yes. Good. Okay. And now the in order to stop it, I can't just do a Docker compose down, or I guess in this case, I probably can do a Docker compose down yeah. so long as I tell it what file name I want to use, right? You can you can use the tear down script. Uh, it automatically detects. And oh, oh, okay. Up. There is a teardown script. I didn't realize that. Nice. Very good. Okay. 
Oh, and I should have just read the instructions. Good. Thank you. Very good. So it looks really promising, Ashutosh. Anything else you'd like to explore together or things that we should work together on? Uh, I was uh, wondering why that uh, change didn't uh, reflect when we then the init script. Oh, well, let's let's take a look and see. So so let's see what we when I when I ran Jenkins in it, let's read what it did and let's see if we can make some guesses. OK, so it ran it runs a series of steps, creates the SSH keys and then does start tutorial. Right. And start tutorial says Docker compose of this so it goes on the uh, second uh, second examples directory and runs there with docker command uh, f uh, with the f option yeah so let's look at that file and see if we can understand what happened i think it'll be i think i can explain it but let's just be sure so this one now inside here there's a docker compose.yaml that says build from docker files right and so in docker mm -hmm. files there will be a Docker file here. And because I had already built, oh, that's interesting. I'm curious why you need to do this. Huh. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was, uh, uh, the, we didn't, uh, there didn't have permissions to access the rebuild jobs without the root. Ah, huh. interesting, okay. That may need some further further exploring because in general, we shouldn't have to do that because it should already be set that way. Interesting. Okay, so let's, let us, but the thing that's happening is right here, but because of the way Docker thinks about changes, it only perceives a change if the Docker file script changes, not if the one of the files that the script is tracking changes. So this copy of Jenkins of plugins.txt did not cause the Docker cache to be invalidated because it hadn't changed. If I change this, so instead of 2.0, if I change it to 2.401.2, and even better, I'm going to change this because I like Java 17 now. I want to change this to be a Java 17 version. So that is just a minute while I go find it. What's the what's the Docker container name for Java 17? So let's make it. 2.401.2 JDK 17. We'll try that. Okay, and you said what I can do now is I can do a Jenkins teardown. We already did teardown. Oh, I thought I was still running. Oh, not. Okay, good. So now if I do a Jenkins in it, so what's changed? What's changed here is Let's go even further. Let's see, get branch. I'm going to just put myself on a branch and we're going to make this um, use JDK 17. And now when I say Jenkins in it, we're expecting that what it will do is it we has to download. The, oh, go ahead. What's we forgot that? the new uh, uh, new keyword after. Oh, the oh, and so that so that means it chose something different. This one uh, runs the default default job that is uh, on the root directory, so we didn't change that one. Okay, so let's fix. Let's do that then. 
Okay, I and it, it says, well, wait a I second. Didn't, it didn't, didn't do, it do it then either. Interesting, why not? Although, no, no, it did. It's now running a Java 17 agent. Oh no, it was, was this, was this before that it was, well, let's look. There's a reason we have a web browser. Uh, and the agent was uh, Java 17 before too. I think we changed the controller. Oh dear. Okay. So you were running Java 17 on the agent, but Java 11 on the controller. Oh, I'm confused now. I don't know. Yeah. Let's, let's do some looking. Let's see. Okay. So Meg, excuse us just going at this, but I think. Oh, that's fine. I'm fine. Okay. All right, here we are. So we've got 2.401.2. And if we go to login, Okay, and we say manage, oh, let's look at the system information and show all the values. And we'll see, we are definitely running Java. Oh, no, it's still running Java 11. Okay, so it definitely did not apply the change that I had put in that file. Now, why not? Okay, so... We said Jenkins in it, sh new. And what it says is for new, it's going to use var 3, 02, yeah. right? And that's the one that we used here where we'd made the change 02. Docker files, Docker file. And we definitely change this. You can see the change. I can see the change. Oh, oh, oh. We didn't delete the previous image. Well, but, but the, oh, oh, and is this doing a, and working with a named container? when it does the build. So I don't know how Docker Compose works. Does it use but a- it, uh, we, we do use the dash dash build argument at the end of the Docker Compose. We do, that's okay. Right. Well, so Docker build. Oh, that's right. It was Docker Compose, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, but here there's no minus minus build. Okay. Okay, I right. thought it was there. Well, and let's let's see let's see if that helps because this may tell us if that's a if that's a useful thing. Okay. So let's do the Jenkins in it. And now it's building. Okay. So now we, sh and now it's using Java 17 in the controller. Docker PS. Okay, so now let's try connecting and see what it tells us. Okay, my computer's a little bit slow, apparently, huh? Uh, it does take time in my computer. It uh, works faster on Gitport for some reason. 
Yeah, Gitpod probably has much more than an two and a half gigahertz Intel i5 from who knows how many generations ago that computer is. And I've only got eight gig of memory. So yeah, old computers doing old work. All right, here we go. Log in. Oh, whoops. No, not that. Admin, we admin. want to be admin, admin. Okay. And now we see here it's still 2.401.2. But if we go to manage Jenkins and we look at the system information, it should show us that it's running Java 17. And now the agent is should also show us that it's running Java 17, which it is good. Okay, so I think that's a useful change already because we want the controller and the agent to use the same version of JDK. So I'm going to go ahead and push this as another um, as another uh, pull request. Okay, so without the minus minus build art, changes to the container definition are not rebuilt. Okay, so Ashutosh, you'll see a pull request arriving now. And I wanted to take a look to see if there were any other surprises here. Oh, right. The one I wanted to, to do the quick fix here was this one, system. And fix that. Now, the security folks are going to fret, I suspect, about us using default username and password. But I assume that's something we may have to work on later to figure out how do we how do we show the, the, the login password to the user when we started it with Docker Compose, All right? Because that that user, the, the generated password, if we didn't create the admin user, would be in the Docker log that's here. Good. Okay. Anything else you'd like to explore, explore Ashutosh, while we're here? Um, uh, no, uh, uh, I also wanted to ask uh, about the documentation process, how, how it will go uh, after, after the uh, tutorials are done. So what, what I hope we will do is actually have you, or I would prefer you be the one who submits the pull request, that what you'll do is submit a pull request to Jenkins.io proposing to simplify the documentation. And if, if that's a, a challenge for you or it gets in your way, let us know and we'll help you here and be very happy to help you do it. So what you do is you would go into first place we would go is to the docker install guide so let's let's look at the page this way so let's go to the jenkins documentation documentation installing jenkins in docker and here at the bottom of this page is an improve this page link and when you click the improve this page link it should take you to this file that gives the Docker installation instructions. Oh, unfortunately, it's using an include. So we'll have to go to another page that actually has the real instructions. Like this. 
but this is where that horrible horrible nightmarish thing is that says look here are all these detailed instructions and either you or and my first preference is you but if not you then me or meg or kevin martins or bruno would replace all of this awful thing with docker space compose up minus d minus minus build or with first a how do you get the compose file you know a, a git pull of the repository something like that does okay, that make sense it. yes now the where do we host that repository put it in your repository for now and ultimately i suspect we will want to have it in the jenkins dash docs uh, repositories because that's where we have the other examples so here's where we've got the simple maven app and we would just put one more here on the popular repositories list and it would be i don't know docker compose or something like that or mm -hmm. jenkins install you will we'll have to negotiate what name we give the repository yeah we can figure it out later then yeah okay i got it. thank you Mark. okay now in terms of plugin version management that it's it's i think plugin version management is less important than figuring out how to do the complete node.js tutorial and the yeah, maven and tutorial uh, uh we had uh, uh bruno opened an issue uh, uh like two three weeks ago about the plugins uh, so it was open for a long time that's why uh, good we, okay so yeah. so you're not you're not working on it you're not wasting time on it very good okay. oh good yeah some good ideas here very good okay And I like that you're using Gitpod, although that seems like that would be really complicated. Has it been has it been helping or hindering you using Gitpod for development? No, uh, it's good for for testing, like uh, for testing purposes. It's, it's good because it provides fresh uh, setup every time I'm running with new workspace. Okay, I like Gitpod. Nice. All right. Yeah, and this one, it's not just that the Gitpod reverse proxy is set up is broken. It's really that. Because Gitpod also uses custom uh, URL for. Uh, right. And, yeah, it's but... also broken on a local installation, not just on Gitpod. Yeah, good. Any other topics you want to review while we're here? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, so Meg, the next topic I had was this one. I wanted to bring it up. Where is it? Oh, it's not on my list anymore. Okay, so I, I did repairs to this pull request so that it should now build. Let's confirm it does. With good first step. Yeah, and it builds successfully now, so that's good. But I've also updated... And this is one where I wanted to review with you. And I think if you and I review it here and we're okay with it, I may just go ahead and merge it. Wow. So the uh, the best practices page, uh, after Jeffrey Chan's work, I've done some further revisions. Let's look at it together and see what we think of it. Sounds good. Okay. So here under the, I think it's under using Jenkins, which is not in the top level using jenkins best practices okay so the way it's laid out right now is first recommendation use organization folders and that's a that's a use pipeline with the maximum optim maximum automation so it will read github or it will read gitlab or bitbucket or giddy and generate multi-branch jobs for every repository it finds that has a jenkins file in it so maximum automation uh, if you, right. if you can't do that and and then it's got links it's got embedded videos from darren for four of the of those top level things right github 
Bitbucket, GitLab, Bitbucket, and Giddy. Now, if you can't do that, then I put in, okay, fine. If you can't do use organization fold, folders for whatever reason, then you should use multi-branch pipelines. Okay. Now, I didn't embed a video with from Darren on multi-branch pipelines, but maybe it's worth a search to see. Um, let's see, how would we do that? Darren Pope, multi-branch pipelines video. Okay, there it is. Mm -hmm. So we probably should embed that one. Oh, let's see. No, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Maybe we've got something even better, the GitHub one. Yeah. Okay. Now, now there's a question for you and for me. Should we put... Here's one. Here's the other. Here's the third. And each of these is potentially a useful video to embed there as well. So, okay, so this one's for GitHub branch source. Yeah, I think this, this again is a good place for them to, what do you think, Meg? Would you, uh, do you think it's, it's okay for us to embed another round of videos in that page, just like we did organization folders, put it great. next for multi-branch pipelines? Agreed. Okay. All right. And this one, I think, is the same one as this one. They did in those same graphics. Yeah. No, they're different. Okay. Oh. So now I don't know which one is the newer of the two. Oh, oh, this is Cloud BCI. No, no, don't oh. do that. Okay. okay. That's why. That's why the, the, the same thing. But here we've got three videos, one on GitHub branch source, one on GitLab multi-branch, and one on Bitbucket Cloud. Yep. All right, good. So so you're okay if I embed each of those three into that best practices page? Very good, yes. Okay, good. So that would give us more video content for use multi-branch pipelines. Mm -hmm. Then the next level for me was, hey, if... If you can't use multi-branch pipelines, fine, use pipeline. What we've got is a layered approach there. And then the next one is a don't. Don't use the Maven job type. Ah. And this one is, a, I only realized this today while thinking about it, that the Maven job type we've been recommending for a very long time, since ever since uh, twenty. What was it? Well, let's go read it. I think the original blog post was from Stephen Connolly in 2013. So 10 oh years ago, he said, that job type is evil. <laughs> <laughs> and that documentation is now embedded. His description of the job type being evil is now included in the plugin's own documentation. All right. To tell people, really, you should reconsider if you're using this job type. Yeah. So my thought was, that's a good thing to include, saying, get off this. Don't, don't be using that one. Right. So then the next best practice was... Wait a minute. Let's go back oh. to those, though. Okay, go ahead. Those are not four best practices. They are... Mm -hmm. There's an arching. There's a theme there oh oh right right you're right there are really if I glance at this I say okay I should use organizational for holders and I should use multi-branch and I should do pipeline right and there's right. four separate things those and so I'd like yeah I kind of like to see those all go down a level and put into one section what are we doing we want the maximum automation and you know and this sort of stuff 
and you have these options in descending order of priority or whatever. Right. So what if I you're you're absolutely right. Very good. What if the top level here, instead of use organization folders, this would go down a level, but the top level was automate job maintenance. Very brilliant. Or, okay. Or automate job. See, I, I hesitate to say crud or create read create update delete. Uh, maybe it is automate job maintenance because that for me is 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 a best practice, right? It should be, and let's so let's do that. Let's yeah. let's be. It's actually structure your project for maximum automatic. Okay, now that that I don't Although understand. Although it's awkward. Well, I, what I don't understand is the structure. For me, it's it's just a use. The verb is is is. Okay. But but let's let's test it. Let's get it running, and we'll look at it and see. Okay, so uh, PR checkout. Okay, if it's that one. All right. So now, and I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I don't remember how. Okay, so here we go. So instead of use organization folders, we're going to put that in one level. And we're going to put this one in one level. And we're going to put this one in one level. And now that has the nice benefit that it will also highlight the don't use Maven job type. Okay, so automate job. How about job definition? No, how about testing ideas here, Meg? Okay. Um, um, structure. I keep wanting to come back to structure, and it's probably this. Okay. Well, let's put your let's put your idea. Automate job structure. Oh no, it's the structure. To to me, the the organizational folders or the pipelines or the multi-branch are structural issues. Right. But I'm, it's, so I'm something it's like structure your project for maximum automation, but it's, you can't dance to that, Denise. Um, what if the header is yours? Automate job definition. Okay. And then you have an introductory paragraph that includes the word, you know, though you- Oh, you, oh, right, right, the, okay. The structure of whatever ever um, determines the level of automation you achieve and something to that, I- Okay, so something like, so, and, and that we've got here where it says organization folders like this so it's something about um jenkins can automatically create update and delete jobs uh, based on the repositories it detects in your source control software configuration management system just a minute use that automation uh structure your pro okay let's structure your job definitions to Yeah. Benefit to to okay to get the most okay now I'm going now, me writing live is really dangerous right but get the most benefit from Jenkins automation right job from automatic job definition from automatic job management by Jenkins how about this. Yeah. Okay. And now if this 
were deleted and it immediately goes right into use organization folders. Did it now there, God, if you're writing, we need us, you'd say you have these three options. Ah, right. In descending, you know. Oh, right, right, exactly. And something, you know, and you could say this is the best way and. Right, right, exactly. So it is, there are multiple alternatives. Yeah. For job, for automatic job management, right? Right. Including. And if I remember right, the markup syntax is this. Okay. Manage, create new folders, create, update, and delete new, delete multi branch. pipelines and their jobs automatically. Something like this. Yeah. Create, update, and delete pipelines Pipeline, okay, pipeline jobs. Yeah. Folders and their job, pipeline jobs. Let's make it like this. What do okay. you think? Okay, yeah, good. All right. Unambiguous. And now, and it, it, just by using shorter line text each time, the reader may already get a hint. Oh, I should use the one that's got the longer line. It uh -huh. does more stuff for me. Right. Uh, and this is manually managed, defined pipeline jobs. Okay, now in each section, why would I not use the organizational folders? Uh, because if you if you have too much stuff in your organization and you're not willing to define subsets. Okay. But everybody should define subsets. I mean, it's easy to do. Right. And I'm just thinking about a word, a word or two. You know, as I look at this, so this, so now I've got these three options that you all say fulfill this how do i choose between them or right right you know, and exactly isn't it that we just say preferred preferred because right. here it says if you use any of these things github organizations bitbucket teams gitlab groups or giddy organizations yeah. then you should use organization folders okay now, maybe you're a, a GitLab user like me who is a lone, isolated person and you don't have any GitLab groups defined, okay. then you can't use it. Right. Or maybe your Giddy, Giddy system doesn't have an organization defined, it's just got one user. Right. Then, then you can't use it. And so then your choice is multi-branch pipelines. Okay. Ah, and where you say if something prevents you from using, well, okay. Yeah, so, so the idea is if something prevents you from using organization folders, use multi-branch. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be fun to say you should reconsider your life choices. <laughs> but, but that's that's not appropriate, right? It's like, right if right. something prevents you from using organization folders, you need to ask why. Because really, you want the automation, but but this is trying to be more polite than that, right? And it's well, and it's it's also size of scale too. Like you, you know, you've got a very small project or something that you're using, right? For. Right. Then, yeah, exactly. Or something. So, 
Okay, so here's our automate job definition and our, we came, uh, oops, oops, use pipeline, use, yes, that's good. We've got everything there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and push this. Except you don't have Maven is under that section and you don't have that in the lead in. Oh, no, no. Maven is not under the section. Hang on just a minute. Let me get this don't finished. Don't use Maven. Oh, don't use Maven as separate. Okay. It's a top level, top okay. level. It's a level two head, right? Okay. So, okay. Automate job definition. Level heading. Okay. So now we'll see that I'm one ahead. I'm going to push that. And while that's doing that, I'm going to actually build it and we're going to take a look at it just okay. to be sure that it, it renders the way we think it should. And we've almost run out of time. So we will ah. just get this done and then we'll call ourselves done for the day. Okay. Ashutosh, thank you very much for joining us. We sure appreciate your, your work on the project. Nice thank you guys. Nice work. Okay, so here is this, the page. And now if we jump into managing, into using Jenkins best practices. So here's how it looks now. Automate job definition has three things under it. Don't use the Maven job type. So we start with a positive, automate jobs. Then we give a negative, don't use Maven. Don't use the Maven job type. It's okay if you right. use Maven. Build with Maven all day long. It's great. And then more of the same. And it'd be nice. I'd like to see. There's an old, it's sort of an arbitrary thing, but there's a rule of seven that a list of stuff that's more than seven is hard to comprehend. Oh, good. Okay. So let's and, talk about and that's which... what I, is where, you know, are there others of these that could be combined? Because they're all good issues, but so that there's subheadings, you know. It makes it easier for the mind to grasp that this this starts to look like a phone book. Well, and, and it's a good point. There are some of these, I think, that could just be dropped to apply the rule of seven. So, for instance, show failures to the right people might be a, a subset of report build results. Yeah, right. in fact, it is, right? It makes sense. to. Or for... they might all go together. What else have you got? Let's see. Well... Okay, so what about, for instance, what if we said in terms of, job? well, see, use simple project names doesn't matter at all if you follow the advice of automate job definition, because it will do it automatically for you. So this one should probably just be dropped completely. Yeah, but there's some people who aren't going to do that. It's, it's good to, I mean, we still see it with these people. They've got a 260, Kubernetes gives for most names of most objects, a 263 character limit. Right. And we have a lot of people who are having trouble with that. Oh dear. Okay. And, but, and I, and what it turns out is they're taking like file names that are being auto-generated to have 20 yeah, they're, characters they're, of time and date or something like that, you know? They're packing a database into a 260 character string. Yeah. Right. Got it. But I, I think the... Those of us who grew up with Unix and six character limits, meaning right. Java people always say, think in terms of short names. Uh huh. Right. The well, Java so... people do tend to confuse titles and novels. But, yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So back to, so there are, for instance, this strive for reproducible builds. I think I'm actually just going to remove it because okay. it's a, it's an aspirational thing, not a, I, I, I like it. I like yeah, it. Oh yeah, but but the problem is it's not something you can do with just Jenkins. That one it's is okay. so aspirational that you're saying, oh, here here's a great guideline, and but there are lots of those kinds of great guidelines. I'm taking it out. Uh, yeah, yeah, get over it. I'm taking it out. Okay, now. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's see. But it was this one was show failures to the right people really belongs under report build results. It just right. makes sense, right? right? That's, that's, and then now what are some others here in terms of things that we could, okay. So we put this one underneath. Prevent 
okay prevent resource collision in parallel jobs for me is maybe this one is oh oh what about this what if we had a section that was dedicated to controller management ah so let's put it this way controller management right uh-huh or no I, i've been phrasing them as verbs start with manage your controller yeah or manage the controller and now it's secure the controller and back up the controller ah yeah like this right mm -hmm. the jenkins controller and avoid scheduling overload is again a a way to manage the controller so that you yep. don't overload it okay yep. prevent resource collisions in parallel jobs is also a management thing uh -huh. so that's good okay now so okay maybe this is may, maybe this is a different thing what if we had a top level theme that was manage your jobs and then manage your controllers. Oh, nice. We okay, no longer it, have one to not run your builds on the controller. Oh, no, we've got that. So build on agents. Okay. We oh, definitely okay. have that. Oh, yes. Okay. I wonder if that's. So, so is it manage your jobs? <clears throat> okay so manage your jobs by building on agents by using simple project names and by fingerprinting your dependencies okay that one may not be as good a fit because that's that's really manage your artifacts I could say my artifacts are part of my jobs. Yeah, well, the, okay, so, hmm, well, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm entirely sold yet, but I think, I think this is, this is getting better, uh -huh. and I really do have to stop. Okay, so, but we got you thinking. Exactly, well, and, and well enough that I think I can make more progress on it. Uh, remember, no meeting next week, no meeting the following, following week. I'll week. be gone for two weeks, so we'll see each other again in three weeks. And and just have a good time, but just remember that when you leave, the parents do still need to live leave, live with those children. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, my parents always told me when I went to my grandparents that it was okay as long as when I came home, I re remembered that home was not grandma's house. Right. That, and that's... Uh, that's very fair. Be, mm -hmm. be be kind to the parents of my grandchildren. Right. Not too kind, but be kind to the parents <laughs> of my grandchildren. That's right. Yeah. All Remember right. that grown ups is a difficult stage of life, as the old song says. So. <laughs> right. Excellent. Have a wonderful time. So we will talk in three weeks, I guess. Talk in three weeks. Thanks very much, okay. Ashutosh. Thanks for joining. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you both. Have a good three weeks.